as I promised, we're going to start our video series on propagation or growing of your own native plants, mainly um, milkweed. But of course, I have other needs of native plants and love them because butterflies also need their nectar plants. So we are going to go over right now uh, the three ways that I use to propagate plants, and they are uh, seeds, which everybody is very familiar with. Um, the next is going to be cuttings and um, we're going to go over different ways real quickly and then in more detail in a separate video so it's for length purposes and then we're also going to go over the last one which to me is the easiest and quickest is but it's timely because you have to usually wait a year or so is to go under the plants that you already have and look for their babies um, either they grow th from rhizomes that go under their roots and pop up in other places of your yard. You know that, that I've seen them with weeds and various different things like that. Um, or um, they self-seed, uh, for instance, like tropi tropical salvia and other things that are just readily self-seeding and they'll pop up like in crazy places like the middle of your yard. It's like a pretty decoration there. But, um, and then, so for that, we're gonna do a couple different things. I'm just going to go over how we do the seeds. We're going to do, first off, the regular way that most people are familiar with. So I should state that I am a Floridian. Our native plants are Florida native plants. I don't stratify any of my milkweed seeds. So um, I know, shocker, that is contrary to what most of you people have been taught. Um, sometime when I'm, I have a different, uh, more time, we'll go over, um, different strategies I use, um, taking a lot of research and lots of money, not wasted because it was put to good use as I like to tell my husband, but so we're going to fill, have us here, standard, uh, 10 by 20 tray. Um, I need new ones because I used the heck out of mine, but just 10 by 20 plain plastic tray. I do buy mine um, in bulk, um, but it's time to buy new ones. And I think I'm gonna go for, and spend a little bit more money and get the heavy duty ones because these ones are not that old, but I use them so often and I'm careless. Like when I'm washing them outside, um, I wash them in bleach and soap as to kill any um, funguses or mold so we don't get root rot and waste all our time. I throw them and I was like having a hard time finding some without holes. And then I like, these are my favorite ones. These are, um, and I reuse these too, um, deep rooters. You can see how deep they are. Um, as you know, milkweeds have tap roots, and as does a lot of our um, natives here. So even if they don't, they still get right in here. So I just put that in there. And then standard humidity dome, okay? I'm going to be using Happy Frog Soil, but we're also going to try a couple of different things that I haven't done. Um, actually, I have because I, I do hydroponics. Um, but uh, we're going to use some uh, seed cubes for um, Root Riot is one of them. And we're going to use uh, Rapid Rooter. Um, I already have a favorite, but for these purposes, we're going to keep it in check because I like to keep an open mind and I haven't been doing hydroponics that long to really have a set favorite. So, uh, root riot here. Um, this is what the bag looks like. Sorry guys, I can't see it or read. I don't know who it's by. Um, I apologize for that, but root riot comes and it's already got the, um, um, stuff that you need in it and it's already a little moist so when you squeeze it you're supposed to see some gel if you need to you could re uh, moisten it with some um, regular tap water um, you want it to be really moist but not um, soaked also some long um, tweezers so you could get the seed right in the middle that already has its own hole I just fill up the trays like it would be soil the reason why I like these plugs both of them is because they're biodegradable 100%. They can go in hydroponics or they can go into soil. So, and these ones are Rapid Rooters and it is a, a different name brand. Oh, 
Here is these, see? And then they got, wait, they got a little hole where you put your seed in. And the main ingredient I know is peat moss in here, but it's supposed to have the perfect air and porosity to help things grow. These ones feel pretty damp, but you still should put water with them. Um, if you wanna go even further than that, um, This is um, this is the one I usually use. This is Rapid Start by General Hydroponics. It is for you know speeding up root development, and you know uh, what's in it. There's nothing crazy in here. So and you just dilute it. It is one mL per gallon. Okay. So I use that when I re moisten, and then I put some in a spray bottle and I spray and keep things moist, but not wet. That's really important, guys. Roots don't like to be really wet. So, and then for cuttings, we're gonna go over to that. So we'll compare and we're gonna do three um, different kinds and see which one goes first. And then I'm really excited about the cuttings. So excited. So for the cuttings, let me put all this over here. Milkweed grows really good by cuttings. I like to tell people that when their milkweed is all gone, because the caterpillars have eaten it all, um, there's like some magic with monarch saliva, especially <laughs> that those are the ones that um, will root again very fast. So you want to take um, some clippers. You know, you could use bit bigger than this. This is what I have for when I'm doing my cuttings, but you want to clip them at an angle and then you want to bring them inside. Um, you want some new growth. Ideally, this is for any plants that you do, and those are at the bottom. I like to fertilize mine a, about a week beforehand so that they're in the prime state of, you know, um, being ready to be multiplied. So once you have them, you're going to use a razor and make sure you have a clean cut. So how we're gonna do it is how the easiest way for most people and how they start is just by putting regular tap water in here, you know, um, and changing it out fairly regularly. I do suggest always to use hydrogen peroxide, guys. Um, while this may not be organic, it is a natural thing because it is just hydrogen and oxygen, two um, particles of hydrogen and one of oxygen and it does break down just into water. This will stop and inhibit um, mold and fungus on your uh, cuttings, which are very prone to rot. They will not take, I promise you. Another way that we're gonna do it that I've been doing lately, and this is how I've been doing things, is I take these floral tube holders and I do like little address labels on the outside saying what I have in them and I put them in here and then I fill this with regular tap water. Do not use reverse osmosis or distilled. And then I use an uh, aquarium pump and I use an air stone. And I let that go to town. And I let that sit usually about three or four days. I also put hydrogen peroxide in there. I don't put a heaping ton, usually about a teaspoon per gallon. Um, but I am going to be trying my my rapid start. Oop, there it is. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Forgive my camera skills, but not seeing which, which is where is hard. Okay, so now the third way we're going to try it, and I just got this in the mail today, and it is... I think it is called the Cycloner. Um, it was the one I could get the fastest um, from Amazon because I am in a hurry. And it is, um, what do you call it? It is a power cloner. So I've never used one, but I am very excited to start. And it is works by Aeroponics. So